Are you someone that's always wanted to learn how to DJ but never known where to begin? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can get started totally for free with free DJ software that you can get on any laptop. And also, we've got access to a huge music pack that you can download for free. So you can follow along with this tutorial and then also get kick-started with your music library. This is a very basic beginner tutorial and we're going to be using the Rekordbox DJ software from Pioneer DJ. The reason behind this is because Pioneer DJ makes some of the leading DJ equipment found in most DJ booths and clubs around the world. Their ecosystem is second to none. It literally can allow you to go right from this video here up to playing in clubs and everything you do now in this video, anything that you save and prepare can also be transferred onto the club setup and any controllers or hardware that you buy in between from Pioneer DJ will then plug into this with some of the leading controllers such as the Flex 4, Flex 6, DDJ 1000 and many more that have sold around the world in their thousands. This is a great option to get started as a DJ but before you spend any money on that equipment, Check out this video. I hope you learn some new skills and really ignite that fire for wanting to learn to DJ out of this video. We're going to have you mixing some of the music from the music pack seamlessly, cleanly by the end of this video. The link to sign up will be in the description and in the cards or anything else attached to this video. In there, you will get the music pack and you will also get access to another free lesson where you can take the skills beyond just what is taught in this video. By clicking the link in the email you receive, you'll end up on a Dropbox page like this. You simply just need to download the whole music back by pressing this button here. You don't need to sign up or anything. Just hit download and then just close this. It says your folder is download downloading. You can see that it's coming to my downloads here. Then once that's downloaded, you may need to extract the contents or unzip the file. My Mac's already done this uh, automatically and turned the zip folder into just a normal folder, but you might need to just double click it to unzip or if you're using Windows, go into the contents and drag those contents and extract them out into a new folder. Then you'll be able to import them into the Rekordbox software. You'll notice here we've got two music packs, 2019 and a 2021 pack with all different genres within there and a crossfader sample pack which has loads of one shot samples in too. And this is a great way to kickstart your music library. Um, we're going to use some of these songs within the lesson as well today. Next, you'll need to install the Rekordbox DJ software and you simply just go to their website, click download, agree to the terms and during the install process, here we just agree and download and during the install process, you may need to set up a Rekordbox account so that you can ac access the software. You don't need to subscribe to any of their payment plans, you can just download the free version to begin with. Once Rekordbox is downloaded, you may be presented when you first open it with something like this. The first thing to make you aware of is with Rekordbox, there are two different layers to the software. We have here the performance mode and the export mode. Don't worry about edit or lighting. All we're bothered about are these two modes. Now to actually DJ on your laptop, you're going to need the performance mode, which is fine. You just toggle it here. Just to make you aware, the export mode, which is here, this is for exporting your library to a USB stick or SD card. So you can plug it into the Pioneer DJ CDJ players, which are the things that you will find in most clubs. And you can play your music you've prepared on your laptop directly in their players. That's done in this mode. But to actually DJ from the laptop, let's move back to performance mode. Now you'll notice this is my record box and you'll see here we're on collection and this is called the tree view. In the collection is all the music that I've imported into the record box software and there is loads here. You'll then notice down the side we have lots of different options in the tree view. We'll come to these in a moment. Then up at the top we have the two decks as you can see here, deck one and deck two and songs can be dragged and dropped from the library section at the bottom into the individual players to load into the decks. Before we get started with anything else, I want to run through some of the settings I have set up in Rekordbox, just so that you have the same settings set up on yours as well. If you click the gear icon here, you'll go into the Rekordbox preferences, and there are hundreds of settings in here. But let's just look at the view to begin with. Scrolling down, you can see the settings I have set up here. Now, it's up to you some of these things like the font size and the line space. You can choose what you prefer for those. But I just want to make you aware of some in particular things. Going down, let's check that the beat effects and sound color effects are on. So if you're following the next lesson after this, after signing up, then you'll want this to be active so that you can see those effects. Um, I've then also got pad mode on customize and pad display. Again, it's up to you. This is a good tip if you want to get tips around uh, scrolling around the software. If you put show tool tips on and when you hover over anything, it will explain what that feature is. Sometimes though, it can get a bit annoying because it feels like it's getting in the way, 
I'm going to turn it off for this tutorial, but you could turn that on when you're learning the software. And then here I've changed the waveform color to three band if yours isn't set on that, just so it looks the same. And everything else is pretty much as standard. You can go through and look at this and reference it against your settings and set it up in exactly the same way if you like. The only other thing I want to bring your attention to is the analysis tab here. Keep this on normal, not dynamic. I know it sounds fancier, but keep it on normal um, because you want your songs to be analyzed in like a very repetitive way. You don't want it to try and determine fluctuations in what you call the BPM of a song. So without getting too deep into that, keep it on normal. And I've got the range 70 to 180. Also check BPM and grid and key are both ticked as well. Don't worry about phrase or vocal for now. Auto analysis is enabled for me and this cloud anal analysis is up to you. It just sends data back to the cloud to help others uh, analyze their music correctly as well. Then you can X off the preferences and we're back in the record box software. Next step is we're going to need to get some music into this software and we're going to use the Crossfader music pack that we've downloaded. I want to bring your attention to this section over here, the playlists tab. If we open this up, you'll see lots of playlists of mine. You won't have any in there if you've just downloaded this software. So let's make some. You can hit this plus icon here and it will make a new playlist. We can then title the playlist. I could title it house for the house music in the Crossfader music pack. I can also right click anywhere here and create a new playlist or create a new folder. So I'm going to create a new folder here called Crossfader music pack demo because I've already got it in here. But And then I can drag and drop playlists onto there as well. So then I can start organizing my music that I import into the software nice and cleanly. We could create a new playlist and call it trans, for example, and you could just copy whatever we've got in, say, the Crossfader music pack here. Another neat feature is you could simply, to import the music, is drag and drop this folder onto the playlist folder, and it will create a playlist of the same name and import the music within that folder. Now, before I do that, there is one thing that you really need to remember at this point as a DJ. DJ software does not duplicate the songs. It doesn't import the music and take it from its current location and move it somewhere else. What it is doing is reading the file path location. Now, don't worry about the terminology here. Just know that if you import music to Rekordbox and then move that file somewhere else, it will lose the path to that file. If you delete the file, then it won't find it anymore. So if I were to drag this onto here, you can see it's made a playlist. And if I click on it, it's got the tracks that are within there. Now I can load any of these tracks in just like this, and drag and drop. Now, if I were to rename that Techno One, you'll see now that we get this little error icon next to it. And I can't load these songs in because it's lost the file path. So make sure whatever you do, however you organize your music, you keep it in an organized way and you don't start moving and changing things. If you do move things or change things, then as you can see, I've renamed it back. Or you can do something where you go file, display all missing files and you can relocate files. This is a bit more in depth, but there's more about this in our article guide to go along with this video. So what I would recommend is you have a go at importing all of this music and you can just do it in this simple drag and drop way. And we can just drag stuff across. And it will import it as we do it. And then what you'll find is when it's dragging songs in, here, pop and mainstream, it starts analyzing the songs and you'll see it across the bottom of the software. And what it does is the analyzation of the songs is very important. It adds things like the BPM, as you can see here, the key information, like you saw, we had ticks in the settings and it gives you the waveform. So when we drag this file in, it doesn't have to do anything. It just shows the waveform. So you can actually see a visual representation of the song as well. It shows the BPM, which stands for beats per minute. An extremely important part of DJing is knowing what the BPM of a song is. So you know how fast it is playing compared to the other song you want to mix in. And it also shows the key of a song, which we're not going to cover too deeply in this lesson, but it's still important for the future progression of your DJ journey. Now, if you can't see these things, just right click on the column header and you can show or remove any of these different column headers. You can then drag them around like this and set up your library display to display the information that you want about your music in the order that you want. Just to let you know, this hashtag here is how you can numerically drag and drop files into a numerical order in a playlist. So I can move files. When we are in this, I can move it up and down, as you can see, and make an order out of this playlist. However, if I were to organize by BPM, I can't drag and drop these up and down because it's organized by BPM. Hopefully that makes sense. This is just to get you used to how to organize, manage, and import your music into the Rekordbox software. 
Now that you understand how to navigate around the Rekordbox software and library view, the last things I want to bring your attention to are these options along the top of the software. So we have the two deck horizontal view and you can change the way that the waveforms and the screen is displayed. I'm going to keep it on horizontal because you get the most visual um, bang for your buck with what's going on on the waveforms in that view. Just know as well that you can drop this out and you can zoom in or out on the waveform so you can display obviously more or less of them as they are playing. Then we've got some icons here. Now, the main thing I want to bring your attention to is this one, which is the mixing icon. And this is where it's going to show your mixing controls. Very important when it comes to mixing just with your laptop because we don't have any hardware plugged in. We need these controls available to us to be able to blend the songs together and actually transition. There are other things available here, such as effects, but I'm going to leave them out of the way for now. And there's a sampler, which again, I'm going to leave hidden for now. The main thing, like I say, is the mixer section. Now, moving over to the deck controls, very important as a DJ. Here are some of the controls that you're going to use, whether you are doing it on a laptop or even up to using hardware, you've bought your first piece of equipment. These are the controls you're going to use every time you come to mixing two songs together. So first of all, very important is the cue and the play button. The play button, as it says, will play the song. We should know that. Then we can press the play button again. It will pause the song. However, what I want you to get in the habit of doing is while the track's playing, pressing the Q button. This takes you back to this orange marker, which is called our cue point. A very important part of DJing is being able to jump back to your cue point so you can keep queuing your song up and get it in time with the other song that's playing. So we can play a song and then we move up and cue it back up. We can hold the cue button like this to kind of preview the song. And then when we release, it will go back to the start. We're just gonna play the song and then what we can do is we can use this section here to change the speed of the song. And this is the BPM. So originally, you can see it says 0.0% and that means it's at the original speed of the song. We've not made it any faster or slower. Now I can click on this plus and minus and I can start making the track faster or slower. I can also click on the actual number here and then drag up and down to do drastic movements. So that's 10% slower, as you can see by the readout below, and that's 10% faster. Now, if you get to this position, you can do two things. You could double click on this 10% and it will reset the BPM back to its original BPM. You can also change the range of the BPM. So here it's on plus or minus 10% and we can go 16% wide, 6% or 10. I would recommend just leaving it on six or 10% to begin with, but just to show you if you're on wide, you can go really slow or really fast. Double click to reset and let's go back to 10. We can also use these icons here to nudge the tracks. So I don't know if you can hear this, if I just play this and then hold one of these arrows so the way that the track's playing. So if I keep tapping that, it makes it faster temporarily. If I go the opposite way, let's listen, it makes it slower. So I'm just tapping that and what it does is it nudges the track. And this emulates what a you would do on even a turntable, but mainly on a CDJ or a DJ controller. When you are moving the thing called the jog wheel, which is that circular thing on the equipment, when you move it clockwise or anti-clockwise, it temporarily speeds up or slows down the track. And you have all those controls available to us here. The BPM, where we're dragging it up and down, that is our tempo control, and that can be found on all DJ equipment as well, which allows you to speed up and slow down the song. Then make sure that this MT is on. This is short for master tempo, and what this does is it ultimately locks the key of the song as if it was playing at its original speed. If I turn this off and speed this track up, let's have a listen. It's much higher in pitch, or much lower in pitch. Now, technology is pretty good nowadays, whereby if I turn this on, it will slow the track down, but it won't change the pitch of the song. And this is just helpful when you're learning to DJ because if you're doing any nudges on the track, it won't sound really awkward. It also won't sound too intense if you speed the track up by quite a bit, it won't get too high pitched. And it will also help you mix in key, which is something we would look at later on down your DJ journey. I've just loaded two more songs in here. As you can see, we've got Lawrence James' Good Time and we've got this Roberto Martin Munoz, Untouchable. And 
These are both in the house section of the Crossfader Music Pack. And this brings me on to talking about one more thing to do with the tempo and the BPM of a song. These two tracks are playing at different speeds originally. So when they have been produced, a producer has produced one at 126 beats per minute and the other one at 128 beats per minute. Now, if I were to play these two songs together, let's listen. They will go out of time and they will go out of sync. And they start to sound worse and worse and worse. So let's cue both of them back up. This brings us on to the beat sync controls. This is something that's very useful to us, especially when DJing with a laptop where we have, you know, just a mouse and a keyboard to really control the music. So this one says master. This is our main deck that's playing. And if I were to play the other deck, you'll see the master jumps over to this side. If I was to cue that back up and play this side, it jumps over. So it automatically does that and it, it tries to choose whichever the lead song is in the mix. Then if you were to press beat sync on the opposite side, you'll see this has now changed to 126 BPM. You can manually do this if I undo beat sync and reset this by double clicking. I could double click in here and type in 126. Let me do that again. And I can manually do that. Now, because we're using a laptop, like I say, let's beat sync. But beat sync is reliant on the fact that our grids are correct. And you can see the grid markers on the waveforms here. We've got the red, white, 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 red, white, 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 red markers. Now, 90% of the time, the software is great at analyzing music and it detects those strong beats in the music. But you will come across some songs where this grid is not correct and you will need to do some grid editing, something taught in our beginner courses um, so that you can utilize modes like sync. We do also recommend to learn how to manually beat match and and mix tracks together just using your ears. But as we're DJing just on a laptop here and we have the visuals, we need the visuals right in front of us, we're going to utilize some of these tools to help us perform some mixes right at the beginning. Okay, so with beat sync on, I can then press play on this side and then I can press play on the opposite side and you can see it synchronizes the grids together. Even if I press play slightly wrong, it jumps it to the nearest grid marker. But what we want to do is always try and press play on the red marker. So the reds are lined up over the top of each other. Again, this is determined of your grids being correct. And we're going to talk about beats, bars and phrases very shortly. But this is the main thing. You want to think about using this beat sync and just checking it out. The tracks that I'm choosing should work as standard. You shouldn't have to do any editing and they should work nice and well just so you can practice this technique. Now for some music terminology, something very important that all DJs should get their head around before even mixing two songs together because I guarantee it will help you out in the long run. Any transition you do comes back to these basic principles. So bear with me here. We're going to talk about beats, bars and phrases. I know we haven't done much mixing yet, but don't worry, it's all building up to that. Beats, bars and phrases is super important. This is how music is structured and most music that you will ever play any popular music dance music house music drum and bass electronic music anything that's been you know produced and played on the radio even most of the time that you will dance to is produced in something called a four by four time signature now what that means is things work in multiples of four ultimately first we need to understand what a beat is a beat in music is from here to here but there are two sounds in that However, it is classed as one beat in music. So you'd count along in fours. One, two, three, four. So when I count up to four, one, two, three, four, that is one bar in music. And you can start to hear a pattern emerge. So just recapping four by four, we've got four beats in one bar. We can then multiply that bar in multiples of four. So four, eight, 16, 32. And these become the phrases in the music. And you have certain common phrases that will land throughout songs. So for example, you might hear the track change every eight bars or every 16 bars. And on those track, on those changes, that's where the sort of structure of the whole track has been built in sections of maybe 16 bars. There might be subtle changes halfway through at the eight bar segment, but then at 16 bars, it might totally change the song. It might break down and lose a load of the drums and a new vocal comes in. So big things can happen there. And that's important for DJs because we need to know where those points are to set the next track off. So let's just have a listen to this track and count along and listen for the changes. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three bars, four bars. 
five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, and eight, two, three, four, nine. You hear that change? Ten. So you added something in. Eleven. Twelve, two, three, four, thirteen. 14, 2, 3, 4, 15, 2, 3, 4, and 16, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3. So the vocal came in, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 2, 3, 4. And again, it's broken down. So we could say that up until this section, we would class from this point here to the beginning all as sort of the intro of the song. We've got the basic drums that last for 16 bars, and then we've got an eight bar section where there's some vocal in there. And then we're into what you would call maybe the breakdown. Um, it's really good to practice with sort of house music. It's very obvious in its structure. It's got very obvious strong beats, but then obviously you can adventure out into other genres, but you will find anything that's repetitive is a great place to start when it comes to mixing and learning the craft. You can then listen through the song, and I can skip through with this overview waveform here and just skip to different sections, and I could start counting from any change in the music. So this is an obvious change, which is the drop coming up here. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, two, three, four, nine, two, three, four, ten, eleven, twelve, two, three, four, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, two, three, four, change, two, three, four, two, two, three. Hopefully you can hear there how this is now creating almost like Lego bricks of a song. I like to think about it in this way. And we can build up our mixing by using this phrasing. And this is the, the key to making your mixes sound clean, especially if you're just using a laptop as well, because, you know, we don't have loads of controls easily available. Um, so we do want to make our mixes sound super clean. So then what we could do is see how this works in practice. Well, if these tracks are all changing every 16 bars or eight bars, then if we set them both off at the start of a phrase, the left-hand side is going to be the phrase at the very beginning of the song, and the right-hand side is going to be a phrase towards the end of the song, then they should change together. And ultimately, it will get rid of some of the elements of the song on the right-hand side while adding some elements in on the left-hand side. So let's test this theory out. Let's find where the drop is on the last section. So it drops in there. So we can go back and I can just get ready and hit play. In four, three, two, one, play. Let's beat sync on this side just to be doubly sure. So see if you can listen out. There's a phrase change coming here. There's eight bars in eight, two, three, four, nine, ten. You heard this hi hat come in. And you can see on the waveform the phrase change too, but it's always good to try and figure it out with counting as well. And there you heard a phrase change. And we could just let them play and they should keep changing at the same time and change. So you'll see now, if I keep playing, it's gonna change again as it kicks in. And basically the song on the right hand side is mixing itself out while the song on the left hand side is mixing itself in. And that's because of the phrasing and we've got the phrasing right. And straight away it sounds really clean and really seamless and we've simply just pressed play at the right time. Okay, so now we understand a bit about phrasing. Let's load another song in to keep moving through the playlists. Um, let me find one. Let's try this one. Okay, so it's beat synced already as we load it in, but if it's not, make sure to check your BPMs are matched up. Now you can visually see here that we've got this section, this section, and then it breaks down massively. So at that breakdown, I don't think I want anything else playing on the opposite side. 
because it might just complicate the mix. So I've basically got this section to bring the song in and then mix the other song out. And we're going to introduce this, the mixing section, the mixing controls within Rekordbox. Now, all I want to make you aware of at this stage is this, the up fader on both sides. We also have a cross fader here and we can use that to mix as well between the two. I will bring, make you aware though, if you're going to use a cross fader to mix, then go into the settings and make sure that in controller and deck, we have the cross fader settings, sorry, in mixer, we have the cross fader curve set to this curve here, which is a blending curve. So I'll leave it on that for a second and I'll show you both ways of mixing. I prefer to get used to using the up faders, which are these to mix in and out, because when you move over to actual equipment, it makes more sense in my mind to use the up faders to mix and then use the cross fader for doing like cutting and scratching. And we can use basically both things independently. Whereas if we have the cross fader on mixing mode, we lose that ability to cut and scratch as easily if that's something you wanted to do in your sets. So with the up faders, all we're going to do is we could hit play on this side. We're going to bring the fader out of the opposite side. We're then going to find a section of the track where it's gonna drop in like here, and I'm gonna press play. And we press play. Now, you could count along at this stage, but I'm just gonna look at the waveform you can see visually here, and I'm gonna start fading the fader in so it's fully up by that next section, the eight bar section. In four, three, two, it's fully up. Then we're going to start fading the opposite side down. Just slowly. And then take it all the way out. In four, three, two, one. And fade it out. Now if I left that in, there's some big stuff going on on the left hand side, but we've broken down on the right hand side and they wouldn't really necessarily mix well together. We might also get vocals starting to clash as well, which we don't want. So that's how we would perform a basic mix between the two songs. Um, and that's using the faders to bring them up and down. Now, let's say I want to go back the opposite way. I could have both faders up and I could bring the cross fader across if I wanted to blend just using the cross fader um, because it might be easier to do it all in one motion rather than having two controls when using a laptop. So if I were to go towards this section here, press play. Let's go back to the start. Press play. So I just caught it on that drop there and we're just going to start blending in. And what the crossfader does is it brings the volume up of the left hand side while taking the volume down of the right hand side at the same time. And we can just continually move that across. Ready for the breakdown in four, three, two, and. And it's like I miss you more each day, yeah. And let's stop both there. So you can hear straight away we get this nice, clean, seamless blend between the two. And the crossfader is great, especially when using a laptop, but it's just worth getting used to both ways because like I said, as you move on to actual equipment, you will probably want to start using the up faders more for mixing and blending. So building those habits now can be really useful and also really important too. Recordbox is a super powerful piece of software and you have access to nearly all of the features with this free mode. Now, before moving on to all the creative features or even before buying your first piece of DJ equipment, I would recommend learning how to improve those blends and make them sound even more seamless. We can use EQ controls, we can use some basic effects to add some more variety to the mix and allow us to blend between different songs. We can even mix between genres quite easily using some of the effects that are available to us within Rekordbox. All of these things which are taught in the next lesson. If you've signed up for the music pack, you will automatically get access to this lesson within the email. If not, then obviously click the link to sign up where you can get the free music pack that is used in this lesson. As you can see, there are loads and loads of songs in there that you can experiment with. I've only touched on a couple. You can pick and choose between them and have an experiment. Try and replicate this process over and over again and then check out the next lesson where you can improve that process and learn a bit more. Then you want to think about potentially buying your first piece of DJ equipment. And the reason why we're going through Rekordbox here is because their entry-level controllers are some of the best-selling controllers in the market. Something like the DDJ Flex 4 is the ultimate way to get started and it's got it's packed full of features. You know, you can access all of this stuff on some hardware, which is quite important because as you maybe found using your mouse to kind of drag things around, 
you, you're limited with how much control you have. So to actually put those buttons and pads and features and faders all onto some actual physical controls is really important and it will build up good muscle memory around beginning and starting as a DJ. And once you do that, you can check out our record box courses or our dedicated courses around certain pieces of hardware. So you can continue this journey and learn the theory, the fundamentals, all the basics, right up to advanced techniques throughout all of our offerings. I want to know in the comments below what inspired you to watch this video and get started as a DJ. Is it a person? Is it a video you've seen? Or is it a place you've been? Let us know in the comments below and share the love around the community. And I'll see you in another video very soon.